Recording in progress. Good evening. This time I'd like to call the Hinkley Township Trustees public hearing and special meeting um, to follow at today, 6.30 p.m. The Hinkley Township Board of Trustees will hold this public hearing to hear public comment on a proposed zoning map amendment um, at 6.30 p.m. Can I get, get a roll call, please? Asheville? Here. Swidek? Here. Augustine? Here. The Hinkley Township Board of Trustees will hold a public hearing to hear public comment on a proposed zoning amendment on Tuesday, May 31st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. with a special meeting to follow for the purpose of discussion and decision on the proposed map amendment for 1586 Center Road in the administration building located at 1410 Ridge Road, which is on the southwest corner of the intersection of State Routes 3 and 303. <clears throat> Subject of the hearing is as follows. To review proposed amendment request to the Hinkley Township Zoning Resolution from the Township Zoning Commission as follows. Amendment request to the district map and application for a zoning map change requested by the Highland Board of Education, Chris Wolney, 3880 Ridge Road, Medina, Ohio, 44256, to rezone permanent parcel number 01603D as in David, 01006, or otherwise known at 1586 Center Ridge Road, Hinkley, Ohio, 44233, in the area of Route 303 Center Road and Route 3 Ridge Road of Hinkley Township from R1 Residential District to B2 Hinkley Town Center District. After the conclusion of this hearing within 20 days, the Township Board of Trustees shall either adopt, deny, or modify the recommendations of the Township Zoning Commission's <laughs> recommendations. A majority vote of the Township Board of Trustees shall be required. Copies of the proposed amendment will be available for the public viewing from the date of this notice to the date of hearing at the zoning department located at the administration building at 1410 Ridge Road on Monday, 10, uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 2, Friday, 9 to noon. Information may also be found on the Hinkley website at www.hinkleytwp.org under news and events titled Zoning Commission Public Hearing. All interested parties are asked to attend the hearing Written comments may be sent to the Hinkley Township Board of Trustees, P.O. Box 344, Hinkley, Ohio, 44233, or log into www.hinkleytwp.org for virtual Zoom option. Notice of the application um, was given to all of the property owners and adjacent, uh, or to the applicant and adjacent property owners. Notice of the application was properly given as outlined in the Ohio Revised Code in local newspapers, and the application supporting documentation have been available for public review and comments. For the record, non-written communication or written communication by no, made by known or unknown persons not under oath and not properly given during the hearing are not accepted by the Board of Trustees as testimony. Written communication from persons not present this evening may include communications that are not made by affidavit because these communications are made by persons not under oath. They are not accepted by this board. Written communication may include writing by affidavit by persons not present this evening and therefore cannot be subject to cross-examination. These affidavits will not be given much weight, if any, in the decision of the board on this matter. On behalf of the virtual audience, we ask that the public joining in person to approach the podium in the event that they would like to speak and announce their name and address prior to speaking. Additionally, the in-person audience is asked to save personal conversation for after the meeting as additional voices cause confusion for those attending virtually. The state of Ohio has extended the option for virtual participation, which will allow those that are attending virtually to speak if they wish to. We just ask that they raise their hand and the proctor will admit them as a speaker. This meeting is being recorded for transcription purposes only. And with that said, I'd like to open the floor to um, Chairman, Commission Chairman Mark Fisher. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Trustee. <laughs> the process that has taken place so far and, and what will continue onward. Uh, after receipt of the application, it was forwarded to the Planning Commission for review and a recommendation. The Zoning Commission receives the recommendation of the Planning Commission and holds a public hearing. After the public hearing, the Zoning Commission makes a recommendation and forwards that the application along with the recommendations to the trustees. That's where we're at at this time. The trustees then hold a public hearing, which is happening now, 
and adopts a recommendation of the Zoning Commission, denies the recommendation, or adopts a modification of the recommendation. That's true for every map amendment and text amendment within our zoning resolution. The Medina County Planning Commission held their discussion and voted 9-2 in favor of recommending the rezoning from the R1 to B2 uh, district. The commission's discussion uh, focused almost exclusively on the comprehensive plan, which they believe supported the rezoning. The Hinckley Township Zoning Commission voted 3-1 in favor of recommending against the zoning, the rezoning from R1 to B2. And the commission's decision or recommendation seemed to focus on two main arguments. One, the submission was premature because there is no current plans for the property. And two, the comprehensive plan does not necessarily support the rezoning from R1 to B2. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have now or during the future discussions as they might arise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have the applicant here who might want to speak? <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Chris Walney, Highland School Board. Uh, Marcus, could you touch on the premature um, statement from the Zoning Commission, if there was any details to that? Uh, I don't think that there were really any details. They There was concern that there's no plan submitted for what the property will be developed into. And so their preference was to wait until we see an actual plan for what the property could be used for as a business before we providing recommendation. Right. So I'm not trying to drill down into the details too, too much, but existing property owner looking to sell, is it always the case to scrutinize what it could be in order to make a decision on a potential sale? Is that, is, that, is that a commonality, I guess I could say? That would be my question. Um, you know, the Zoning Commission spoke on it. The Planning Commission also spoke on it. So I'm here to answer any questions. I think I made my case over the last couple of months. Um, property owner, in this case, it's a different situation because it's a school. So it's not just my face, but it's actually, you know, a group of individuals could not be me, could be anybody else over the course of the future. Um, but I think we made our case that we'd like to, as our fiduciary responsibility that I've mentioned a number of times, give as much back as possible. Um, and I would argue based upon what the planning commission of Medina County shared that the comprehensive plans from 2003 and 2015 does, does have language that supports um, a future larger town center, as well as the ability to rezone when property owner has that request. So that's all I have right now, but I'm available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Can you please come up and state your name? Uh, my name is Paul McCarty. And I'd like to ask Mr. Walton a question. Um, don't the taxpayers of Hinckley have a right to say what happens at that school? I, I Seeing that you got a windfall, school board got a windfall if that it's uh, zone commercial. Could you define windfall? You made a statement yeah. that you guys would get a windfall, get a lot of money, school board. Yeah, but that, that's why I made the I'll come by the microphone. So Thank you. Um, that's why I made the statement that I could be in that position or anybody could be in that position now or in the future. It's not my money. The reason we're chasing this down is because it comes back to actually you. No, it don't. Yeah, it when does. You, when you asked for that bond levy, mm -hmm. you did not state that you were going to relocate to school somewhere else. Yeah, we, we did. We had no. You didn't. It, well, you're supposed to be re relocated right there. Well, we had. Can I ask the quiet in the room, please, while the discussion happens. Thank you. We had six different community hearings, and then upon those, we took internally a lot of like like these groups do, and made the decision to move to larger facilities because the state recommended 25 acres or more for a new school. They recommend. They don't mandate. Right, but we couldn't sit in these current environments with the yes, future could. populations. A lot of schools in Ohio do. Well, I mean, it's that's not it's not mandated. Right, 
But that's well, why didn't the people Hinkley get a chance to vote on that? Because that's not a votable item. Okay. Why don't we have a chance chance to vote about the school? I don't want to look at Dollar General. Well, we talked about it at the last zoning commission meeting. A Dollar General couldn't go in there based upon the small <laughs> amount of square footage that's allowed. You know, if, if people want to vote, and I'm not being rude or insensitive, but if you want to sell your house, that's residential. Yours is residential. That, that belongs really to taxpayers. Of and that's my point. That's why the money comes back to you. Yeah, we don't want the money. What do you want? What, what we want you to do is tear it down. Well, <clears throat> tear it down, sell it to the township for one dollar. Let the taxpayers of Hinkley and the township decide what to do with it. But that would be sidestepping our oath of giving financial responsibility back to the community. You guys want the next levy, don't you? Well, I, I wouldn't take threats like that, but no, we can not, have... It's not a threat. It I'm, is. I'm asking a question. Well, then ask me a question. Don't give me a threat. Well, that, I did. Okay. I gave you a statement. You would like the rest of the levies passed. I would like to see them passed, too. So now we're quid pro quo. No. I tear down a building, you give me a levy. That's a threat. I'll talk to you all day long. I just can't take conversations like that. There's procedure to follow. Okay, then we're done talking. Thank you, sir. Chris, I have a question for you. Yes. You had um, said that you had six different discussions deciding, um, right. you know, were you going to build on the existing land? Were you going to relocate it somewhere else? When was that decision made to build on a different? That those, those community discussions were teachers, parents, pastors, you name it, whatever. Um, over the course of six weeks, we walked all the old buildings. That was 2014. Mm -hmm. And then upon collecting that data, went back to the board. And at that time, we were also playing with the state. The state funds school properties to a certain percentage. It's based upon your economic status of your district. Mm -hmm. um, don't quote me, but like Brunswick is like 37%. Wadsworth is like 40%. They get that much money towards their project. Mm -hmm. We unfortunately only get four. So we were trying to decide at that time during those conversations with the state, how um, we were going to approach the sites because they were speaking to us about requirements, even though we don't take their money or we don't use their money. If that's the case, we still have to follow certain regulations and you have to, you can't build on a six acre parcel anymore. You know, when that was done in the, in the thirties and forties, whatever the case may be, we had a jump sites, you know, larger driving ambulatory services, things of that nature, uh, sewer for the, for Hinkley. Um, you just need the larger property. So that's when we began the hunt 2014, 2015 for more property. So you knew in 2014 that you would have to relocate the property? Yeah, we announced that. Okay. It didn't say that on your back page. For that was posted in March or that was posted in April of 2017. So that's why I'm asking. Okay. Yeah, it was discussed starting in 14. I can't, we, we brought the, bought the property in I think 17 or 18. Okay. It was 2018, right? It was after the levy passed. Yeah. You can come on up. Please state your name and your address for the record. Mike Holmberg, 1470 Hinkley Hills Road. And first off, I will never vote against a levy no matter what. But beside the point, how big is that parcel? Chris? Oh, one, yes. How much? About seven, six, eight. Seven. Okay. And what? I see Granger is torn down. I haven't been by Sharon. Is that torn down? Yeah. What has happened to those properties? <clears throat> the Granger property will stay the larger part of the Highland Campus on Wilbur and 94. Um, as you know, um, the new Granger was built. That's all contiguous properties. Um, dates back in 97 when it was discussed how the future of the high school would look we needed more property to be able to continue on the back side of the high school if the population grew to a point where we needed to add wings we couldn't because that property was farm, farm empty farm field marshland now we've been able to buy that whole corner so old granger or the old middle school is now part of that campus. It'll just be parking or pa like a park-like setting. It's all grass now. And they've added some parking around the perimeter of what the building used to be. 
Okay. Is what Sharon? Sharon has been torn down and they're planting grass right now. Um, my middle son is playing a baseball game there as we speak. Um, but baseball fields, they keep in the playground. Anybody who went to Sharon, there was a garden, if you will, and all that was kept in place. Uh, the memorial stones were pulled and kept for safekeeping, but that property will be kept at the current time. I don't, I don't have any plans for it. Like we, me, the board, but at the moment we're not going to be selling that. Okay. So, um, no matter what happens with the Hink Elementary site, that I know, I think at the Meet Your Candidates thing, so that that building was not turned down, and the other two was were, so that building is still a viable structure. But chances are, when it's sold, it will probably be torn down for something else, maybe well, three three rot three I've heard, lots. I've heard both sides. People have come to me and said, "I'd like to do this, this, and this." People have said, why don't you sell it and then have them tear it down? I can't control what they do after a sale. I'm not saying that I understand that. I'm not saying that to you. I'm just saying. Um, You know, again, odd situation. One of the only school buildings in the district. (laughs) Been around for eons. What do you do when it's residential and you own it, but you can't speak to its future? So the request was made, you know, let's see what we can do with it. And then the new owner would have to make that decision. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Um, Could you want to just stand by this microphone so you don't have to walk all the way back? Oscar and Grady and Sharon got torn down and ain't we dead. So the original plans called for a raising of all three buildings, and that was in the original budget or plan. And then as all of us deal with budgets and plans, things change. So we had an evaluation done on the Hinkley property and it was in our best interest based upon meetings, discussions, legal, you name it. The school board. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a school property. It belongs, well, and that goes back to my original question. I'm wanting to give back financially more, and you told me you're not interested, but that's the only tie that the district or the individuals have to it. We don't want the money. We want you to tear it down, like you said. Right, but you have to understand plans can and do change. Just because somebody pulls a petition to build a garage, then they get the petition, doesn't mean they have to build a garage. I know it's a stretch of a conversation, but that's the owner's right. That money that caused that would have been spent on the raising of the building went back into the bucket. Think of paying your car off early. Same scenario. Now, you're coming up with all this other balloons. I'm coming I, up with facts. I, I don't care about Granger. I don't care about Share. I don't care about Brunson. Right. I don't care about Hinkley. Well, as far as I born here 84 years ago. I can appreciate that. I know you can. But you know, and we own half a hand. Well, that may be the case, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to represent the school, and I do represent all three townships and half of some others. We have a board member from the living the Hinkley that represents Highland School. I'm the closest. No, you're not. You live in Sharon or Granger. I live on the tip of Granger. Right. I'm the closest to Hinkley. Everybody else is in Sharon or further south in Granger. But I don't, I mean, I'm not here to discuss that. I, I'd love to answer your questions, but I can't get to the point of this is financial related. And that would look bad if I was the homeowner, but I'm not. I'm trying to give it back to you guys. Tear it down, give it back, sell it to them for a dollar. But I can't do that with, fi- yeah. well, I could, but yeah. everybody who's not in this room, not labeling everybody in agreeance, would not be happy with me because we didn't go about it the right way. That's why boards exist. Mm-hmm. To look at the to look at the whole picture. You know, 1950, Stingley argued mm-hmm. whether they should consolidate with Granger and Sharon. I know, I've read it all. Or Brunswick. Yep. Stingley really didn't want to consolidate with nobody. Right. But it was mandatory. So we picked Granger and Sharon because we didn't want to look like Brunswick. Okay. You're going to make us look like Brunswick. By by doing what exactly? By selling that commercial. Well, it'd be like it'd be business. You're going to get water, then you make it source, and then you're going to look just like Brunswick. Well, I don't think water would be a negative, especially for the town center, if that would come. All right. I think it would be. I think it should just stay the way it is. 
That's why most of the people don't move to Amber. Agreed. If, they, if they, they didn't move here, they moved here knowing they didn't have source for city bought. Okay. Well, that's not up to me. I'm not, I'm not going to be a property owner. Thank you. I'm going to guess you, the good guy. You found a big old happy. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. And now we're in Yellowstone. Chris, before you leave. Yes, sir. Can you just clarify the timeline for me? So the levy was in... 18. 18. Yeah. And at that time, the proposal was to include taking the current facility down? Yes. But you told me you were shopping for new land in 14? No, we were discussing the idea of how the buildings would look. There was an idea of one central building in Granger. And when did you buy the property, this property? I had to go back and look. It was after 18. It was after 18? Yeah. Wasn't the levy in 17? I thought it was November 17. Check, check for me. I'm not sure. We, we may, it may have been 17 November and then it became a reality in 18. Um, I'm not asking you to check. I just meant... I'll yeah, no, because I obviously have been researching it. Right. Um, and I thought it was November of 2017. And the fact sheet that was on the website on April of 2017 said um, specifically with, you know, where the new school is going to be located. It says if the district decides to replace all three elementary schools, they will likely be built on the current site. So that was April. Yeah, that was 2017. That was the original plan. But it did change. I mean, that's. A normalcy. We can, you know, things can be changed, updated. Um, it, it came down to the, 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 you know, the, the amenities that were needed for a new structure. Um, I mean, there's not much more to say on that than it was a necessity. It, you know, we weren't running around with district money just buying farms. It was, you know, out of future planning because we don't know. Like for example, for Sharon. I know this is Hinkley, but. Um, Sharon's projected growth was two times that of Hinkley. And yeah, a lot of it's because of the Wadsworth annexations, but we still, we as the school have to prepare for that influx of students. Um, so Hink, or Sharon was built bigger than Hinkley and Granger. And that was part of the planning. So in 14, when we discussed, I, I remember to this day, um, Dave Sambor was there as, as a trustee from here, options A through I. You know, one building, two buildings, three buildings, only two, a, a center, you name it. It just, it went on for six weeks, mm -hmm. six different meetings. Um, and it was all sort of a maturing process. And I do really remember the meeting where we sat down and said, okay, does Sharon get three stories again? Because if anybody doesn't know, Sharon has three stories, had three stories. Um, and I, I believe I was the one that brought it up. So I'll just get more glares, but I, it was about, Hey guys, we have the opportunity to adjust here, and that and that was part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna guess it was after that website statement. Mm -hmm. um, but because of what we learned from the state, it was just the most obvious direction to go. Okay. So hope that answered your question. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page with the dates. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. You good? Anyone else? Please. <clears throat> Dave Maseron, 1060 Center Road. Kathy and I have been here since 1978. And after Chris made a statement, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. You got to help educate me here. A bond issue was passed and that bond issue described the new schools and it described what was to be done with the elementary schools. You just stated that all three elementary schools were supposed to be raised or renovated in the case of, in the case of the, the, the middle school, or is that the high school? That was the old high school. Correct. All right. If, if that funding comes from the bond issue, the bond issue is funded by all the taxpayers right. of the Highland School District right. and the commercial properties that pay tax in the, in the school district. How can you change how that money is going to be spent after the bond issue has already been approved. Right. So um, I have a problem understanding that. That's fine. So help educate me. Come on up. Right. So everything's based upon millage. 
and it's not a million, it's just millage. Right now, we're lucky our evaluation for the entire district is at a billion dollars, okay? So for every mill- Repeat that, please. Okay. So everything in the financial world of schools is based upon millages and, and elsewhere, communities, townships, whatever. And people think, oh, you know, when I ask for a levy, not me, but when somebody asks for a levy of five mil, is that five million? No, it's based upon millages of the um, value of the properties. So right now, the Highland District, all its businesses, all its residential properties, the evaluation from the auditor is $1 billion. So when we go out for a levy or a bond issue, we're allowed to pull and ask for X, and then we'll know what that cost over the amount of time. So again, without getting too much into the weeds, all the existing levies and bonds that we have, whether they're 30 years, they're a renewal, whatever the case may be, they only last so long, but nobody sees this in the public. They step down all the time. So you'll see a reduction on your tax bill because as the evaluation goes up, the original bucket you pulled from gets smaller because there's more people paying the dime. So it shrinks. So to your question about the monies for the school, let's say it was, this is not the right answer, but let's say it was $10,000 to tear down the school. When we decide not to tear down the school, it goes right back into the millage bucket and lowers everyone's payment. If we were going the other way and said, hey, let's build a fourth building, we got extra money, that we would have to go back to the taxpayers for because it's an up, not a down. With a down, we can make the internal choice to send the money back to the taxpayers, just like selling this building for a business amount would be more to the taxpayers. And I, I'm just going to use you as an example. This is not my personal situation. When you step on a board or you step into a township or you step into some kind of legal position, your first responsibility besides safety and things of that nature are financial. And if I don't follow my oath to return the monies back to the taxpayers in the best way fit, not the best way fit by the voters, not because I'm calling everybody and able to make that decision, but could you imagine polling 5,000 people and making that that why do you why do you why do you vote people in? So when that body speaks to lower the money and send it back to the taxpayers, is why we can down the road say we're not going to tear Hankley down because to tear it down we can make more money to sell it, and I give you X more number of dollars. That's it. I understand that the school board would want to choose the best value yeah. for Hinkley Elementary. I understand that. Yeah. But we also have to consider the residents of Hinkley and what they want. And I get that. And that's the other split here. If I was just a homeowner, which that is being treated like as a residential property, nobody would be here. Say again? Nobody would be here talking to me if, I, if that was a house. If I wanted to sell my house, nobody would be here. But because it's a school on a residential property, asking to be business, it's a different story, which is right. I, I don't... I don't object. I mean, please come and talk, but you have to look at it that it's not my responsibility, even though, yes, uh, you know, compared to what some have said, I do care what happens to that building. I spent a lot of time myself in that building, but it's not up to us, the current landowners to dictate what happens to it. Marcus, sorry. It's up to the zoning commission because they have bylaws in place. And we discussed that last month. That's why um, Dollar General cannot go in there. That, that doesn't fit their platform. So we've been talking, not in circles, but just you know, question marks all over the place because what's going to happen to that property? What's going to happen to that property? I don't know. I wish I did know. But that can't be a deciding factor when a property owner comes to the board and says, we'd like to do this, which is laid out in the comprehensive plan. And I know everybody is focused like lasers on the 2022 comprehensive plan, but it was, you know, this wasn't a trick to slide it in under the radar. And Correct me if I'm wrong, the comprehensive plan is a guide, is it not? Well, it's a legal guide because you make it to follow it like a constitution. No, it's not. Oh, easy. Would you respond to that? Anyone? I would be happy to. I also have 
The Ohio Revised Code 519.02, the Board of Township Trustees may regulate by resolution in accordance with the comprehensive plan. That's what Ohio Revised Code reads. So I also have, again, it's going to seem attackful, but as a entity, we have to have representation in situations like this because of how we stand legally. So I asked Mr. Bill Thorne, the retired chief Madonna County prosecutor to be here on our behalf to speak for legalese. Mr. Thorne, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. We could tell you were the legal guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy with the suit, I wouldn't have worn it if I didn't thought of it. Would you mind just stating your name one more time? Yeah, uh, William Thorne, William L. Thorne. Um, and I, I, I would concur with, with your comment. I mean, you spend, public money, township money to create a plan. And the whole purpose of the plan is to follow it. And contrary to what the zoning commission members have said, your plan is very clear. I and mean, it talks specifically about expansion of the town center, enhancement of the town center. Your map shows this property being part of the town center. And as it's only said, what happens to property once it's sold is beyond the control. And there's no requirement in law that a property owner show what he wants to use the property for to rezone it. Many do, but it means absolutely nothing. I'm involved in one now where a property owner had a great plan. Everybody loved it. He got it rezoned. He sold the property. The new person isn't doing it at all. And he thought, but he's following the zoning code. That's what the code is for. You have a zoning code. What can be done in the zone once it's once the property is rezoned? You, they don't have to tell you up front. The, the other the process, that you're, again, just to... Uh, reiterate, if you look at your codes, they are very clear. In fact, they were drafted with that specific intent to be clear. They specifically state that the purpose of this code is to clearly set forth what you want to accomplish. And both codes indicate that they have considered all the various factors and what they are proposing is consistent with maintaining your small rural character. And that includes the enhancement and slight expansion of your town center zone. But yeah, the, the whole purpose of the plan is to be followed. If, you, if you're going to spend township money and time and effort of people to have a plan you're not going to follow, then what good is it? it it's, it's, it's worthless. You've wasted a lot of time and money for no purpose at all. I got another question. Come on. Yes, please. You can separate here so you don't have to walk. <clears throat> Seeing that... Um, you're concerned about saving money for the taxpayers and the school board. Mm -hmm. Why'd you tear that on the other two schools? Why did you save that money too? Right. So the monies that we spent prior to 2014 or actually before they were torn down was a sizable amount of money each year for band-aids. So I'm not going to say call the teachers, call the students that were getting rained on, but part of the decision process to replace those buildings was because of the poor disrepair that they were in. So we could just keep fixing and fixing and fixing or replace. I understand that part. Yeah. But you left Kinkley set. Right. And you just leave them other two set and just walk away. Because there's now I'm gonna solve. Right. There's an equation for the state and it's pretty obvious to anybody that once the building reaches a certain state of disrepair, I think in this case it was sixty seven percent. And the majority of not the majority, those two buildings were in their eighties, eighty three, eighty four percent. Of just no. Well, it's just not healthy enough to be housing what we have today, population-wise. I disagree. You build a new one and you put a kitchen in. Yeah. You can't even cook. Well, cook what? Buzzard day. Yeah. Well, that's because there's things to call technology that have upgraded the entire kitchen set. We don't need griddles anymore, to my dismay as well. I love when Mr. Chorba's back there flipping pancakes and it smells like hell in there. They do, and they teach her cursive as well. <laughs> but I, I think you should have left Sharon stand at the Rangers stand. And, and uh, uh, we wouldn't be, but we also would be having a different argument in about. No, we'd have a different argument in two years. Okay. Well, we would never had it gone for the money, but we'd have a problem with having no billions to teach the kids in. That's what you're trying to tell us. Oh. Hey, we raised a lot of smart kids. Right. Yeah. One time. We can still do it. Yeah. 
I'm waiting for the kidney back. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Humber. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question for zoning. You said that Dollar General wouldn't fit the zoning. So what types of businesses would fit? We have an empty bank, a uh, few other things around here. We've got a dentist office across the street. That worked out good. It's in chapter six. Page 64. Page 64. Uh, this is the schedule of permitted uses within the business right. district or in the B2 district. So retail completely enclosed buildings less than 12,000 square feet is permitted. Uh, retail greater than 12,000 and completely enclosed is not permitted or conditional. Personal services enclosed buildings, banks and, lo and uh, loan credit unions are permitted. Law and garden and nursery is a conditional. Drive up and drive through windows are conditional. Um, restaurants are permitted. Taverns and nightclubs are conditional. Uh, funeral homes are not permitted or conditional. Automobile stations not permitted, not conditional. There's, there's a larger list. Dwelling units above the first floor are conditional. Hospitals, medicals, urgent cares are conditional. Senior citizen, senior citizen residential are conditional. Um, Post office is conditional, schools conditional, libraries conditional. So conditional means that they would have to be voted on by the, what does conditional mean? Sure, conditional means that this plan has to be submitted to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Right. And the Board of Zoning Appeals can review it, perform a site plan, and set conditions on the types of use that's permitted within that location. Okay, so it never, never goes to the voters. It's not like a selling alcohol or anything like that. Can you read the commercial? That's it's not the, the way Ohio Revised Code works. Our BZA is appointed to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you read the what's permitted if it stays residential? Because there were some limited uses that you read off the last week. So most of those are conditional, conditional yeah. permitted uses. And they so those are on page. They're only permitted as residential. Correct. For the most part. There's some. There's something else that's conditional. Conditional. Okay. So those are on page 39. There's conditionally permitted uses within the R1 district, and that's home occupations, home-based occupations, government-owned or operated recreational areas, institutions of human care, think group homes, um, churches and other places of worship, educational institutions, public buildings, funeral homes, uh, parks and recreation areas, golf courses and cemeteries are conditionally permitted. It would it would it's, so it's R one would that so would the homes be single family or like uh, Richfield they turned on their school and they put in you know whatever duplexes or townhouses is that that's R one would that be R one single family single family all right outside of maybe a group home environment where you would see care other people other families not necessarily care right a, a group home for um, mentally disabled. I think a group home for alcohol rehab, those kind of things would potentially have multi family, if you will, within the same right. dwelling. Okay. But outside of that, it's single family. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Bailowski. Uh, Jim Bailowski, 2300 Sandy Creek Trail. I would like to disagree with a couple of the things defining the comprehensive plan earlier and also um, the results of what it says. I'm just going to look at the first paragraph within the existing 2015 comprehensive plan. It defines as a broad policy document intended to guide decisions. And it, it goes on more detail. Next paragraph, it guides local officials, community organizations, and the private sector when considering. So it's not the law. It's a guide for zoning. It's a guide for other departments. Also, if you were to take the existing comprehensive plan and just search for the word town center, comes up 34 times. Enhance, beautify, improve the sidewalks. Expansion is only mentioned in one area and one time in the entire plan. And that's when it talks about, um, sorry, just drew a memory blank. I had it written down. Um, but it's only mentioned one time and that's the future use plan. Every other time. So 34 other times, enhance, beautify, 
make better. It talks about even doing a design committee. So I disagree that the comprehensive plan is, is going forth and saying, let's expand it. I don't see that within the plan, and I encourage you to, to look for it and search for it, and you'll see the same thing. Anyone else? We've got all of you here. This is your time. <laughs> Cindy. I'll just have Hello. you. Yes. S Cindy Engelman, 2087 Ridge. And um, I support the, the, the zoning commission's decision to deny the Board of Education's request for rezoning. And probably some of the things I'm going to say here tonight um, will also conflict with some of previous speakers, but be that as it may, I did spend time researching this. So my position is as follows. The Board of Education needs to complete its original plan and demolish Hinkley Elementary. The cost of demolition is a sunk cost tied to the 2017 millage calculation that was voted on. I think that has been stated. And on the FAQ and the website, it's abate and demolish and the costs associated with this process is included. The Board of Education claims the property is more valuable with the building on it. And that was from prior meetings. The very building that they abandoned due to great disrepair after outside analysis Heating, flooding, drainage, leaky age, plumbing, crumbling walls, falling ceiling tiles, inadequate and retrofitted electrical systems, among those things cited. So I don't know, but I'm kind of hearing that we want the best of both worlds. This is a, a crappy building, and so we needed to build a new one. And then at the same time, no, we don't want to tear it down because it's more valuable if we sell it with the building on it. Second, when the Board of Education has fairly advertised the property for sale and should there be a commercial buyer, then approach the township about rezoning. This will ensure that the township can evaluate such a request in conformance with the character and image of the town center and if it benefits the township. Three, the Hankley Town Center B2 Zoning District represents less than 1% of the to township's total land area. This may seem small and trivial and boundaries may seem inconsequential. The 2015 comprehensive plan recommends future land use development consistent with their figure LU10. However, realistically, things are different. The property boundaries in the plan are not bright line, only high level. For example, the Northwest corner was suggested to be expanded in the plan. But in fact, residential housing has been built on most of that land, and so it has remained R1. The east vertical line drawn in the southeast corner of town center, which is where the school's property resides, in my opinion, in the 2015 plan is arbitrary and defective. In particular, the lot immediately adjacent to the west and south of the school property has been split into B2 and R1 leaving the R1 portion technically landlocked. Rezoning the property to B2 ensures that. And I don't think that's good planning and certainly not beneficial to that homeowner or that property owner. Also, significant residential development is taking place directly east. Not only are there immediate adjacent R1 properties, but the Kabbalah Farms development will, will envelop the entire east and southeast sides with upscale homes and large lots. Finally, one must consider how things existed in 2015 to understand the plan's context. In 2015, when the plan was adopted, the Hinkley Elementary School property was going to continue to be school property, meaning continue to be R1. And there may have been discussions other places, but at the time of the plan, that's what was out there. And at that time, the board was only exploring its options. And it was not until 2017 that they went out for the millage to build three new elementary schools, replacing all existing buildings. And that is out on their website. So even in 2017, it was stated that the new buildings would be located on existing properties. So even as late as 2017, because it's a school, um, it would continue to be R1. Number four, decisions must be viewed in the context of the entire 2015 comprehensive plan, not just one paragraph or one sentence or one word. One must look also to including the section LU.2 key themes, number three, which states to enhance town center, does not state to enlarge town center. 
Chapter two, key themes number three, which states improve town center, but limit expansion. And I think that's the only place where expansion, maybe that you were talking about is referenced. But chapter, and chapter three has three objectives, CI one, CI two, and CI three, which discuss those improvements in more detail. And those are kind of the beautification and things like that, but never in those, in chapter three, are there any objectives related to expansion. So enhancement or expansion can mean to enhance or expand existing spaces, such as the building renovations on the northwest corner of um, right here, northwest corner of town center, where we have a new barber shop. That's an expansion. It does not strictly mean, expansion does not strictly mean to increase the footprint of town center. So reading the comprehensive plan, uh, that's the more likely definition that I would interpret as expansion. Thank you. Jerry Walrath, 2150, excuse me, 2150 Hinkley Hills. I agree with everything that Mr. Bialowski said. Mrs. Engelman said, I support them. I oppose the zoning change. But uh, I have a question, and I'm maybe I'm late to the party, and maybe this has already been discussed and it's uh, already known, but I don't know it. Uh, what What is the difference in the value of this property between residential and business? I mean, how much money are we talking about? I, I've never heard anybody say, and I don't know. I mean, if, if, we're, ta if we're talking about uh, $10,000 or $100,000 or a million dollars, I mean, what, what does it... Uh, What's it going to mean to the school board? I, I don't know, and I'd like to know. It's a, it's a three to one ratio. So residential is X, commercial is three times that. And it's not in valuations of 10,000, it's in the hundreds of thousands okay. each jump. And that's based on what some uh, real estate agent gave you that valuation? Not a real estate, we had a um, commercial appraiser come and check it out. So three times. I'm just gonna follow that. Aubrey Brockman, is that Aubrey? Aubrey, I need you to step up to the mic for the virtual audience. Thank you. Aubrey Brockno, 1000 Center Road. Is that based off of just the land or is that based off of the building and the land? Because I think there's a big difference. Also, I would rather get the lesser amount and not have to worry about what's going to go into a commercial space. And I feel like that's a lot of people in this room, which is why, you know, if if it was something that people didn't mind doing, I don't think people would be coming here giving you such, a, you know, such a hassle. And it is the board. I understand that. It's, and it seems like an attack on you, but it's to the board. Um, and I feel like the reason that more and more people keep coming to these meetings is because it is a problem with the residents of Hinkley and they don't want to see it become a commercial space. Right. Thank you. I hear you. Um, can I try to unload that carefully? Um, you know, your first question was, we like to have less money and, you know, no change, I guess is for lack of a better term. Um, Again, everybody that stands up here is, you know, welcome to say their piece. I've shared endlessly how, you know, plans can change, budgets can adjust, owners can do X, owners can do Y. Um, on the outside of this room, there are a lot of people here and they should be given kudos for coming. Um, there are certain groups in Hinkley right now that the other side of this argument don't feel comfortable in coming and speaking out against because of the retaliatory actions of those groups. So again, kudos for people who are here, but I constantly get comments. I just got one a minute ago when I was sitting there. The room to be quiet, please, so he can speak. Thank you. I just got one a minute ago. Keep going. This is what we want. Now that could be anybody's argument. It could be four different groups, but again, that's my conjecture. I'm not labeling you as lying, but that's your conjecture. But that statement isn't a majority, but we don't do everything on minority majority votes. We do what I said before, what's the best financial process forward without an eyeball on what the building will be. There's just no apparatus that allows a landowner or 
forces a landowner to tell somebody what the land's going to be in the future. I, I hear you. I understand you, but I, I can't. Sorry, he's speaking. I, I can't crystal ball that. I understand your angst and why that feels that way. But I, what, what do I see that becoming? It, it could be some really cool stuff, but everybody just sees, shut it down, blow it up. For what? You know, a couple of meetings ago, I asked, what's the importance behind, you know, having keep Hinkley rule if we're asking for more residential, that's just more houses. I don't understand that argument. I said it last zoning commission meeting. We just had a rec we just had an election. Keep it rule, keep it rule, keep it rule. And now I'm trying to make something business by using the comprehensive plan and add more residential. I'm not asking you publicly, but those are my thoughts. Why are we having this conversation about this property? It's I, I don't see it becoming a dollar general, but that's up to the zoning zoning commission. That's those are just my wandering thoughts based upon your question. So a back and forth. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if it's residential, we know it's not going to move in the direction of taking away from that rural character. If it changes to commercial, it's almost guaranteed that it's going to take away from that, that rural character that we're trying to maintain for Hinkley. If it's somebody that really wants to come in and make it a commercial property, you can still sell it to them as residential and then they can come to the zoning committee right. and request a change. And that's something that we would all be able to be a part of. You know, people that are for or against it could be a part of that. But if the school board, who already said that they would tear it down, is not going to do that. Yeah, I guess I have a, I'm not going to cut you off, but it's key to catch you there. I guess I have a problem with stating, you know, we said we were going to tear it down. I don't know how many times, like, I'm not saying this to you, but I don't know how many times I can say the plan change. You know, that's allowed to happen. It's just like when this was brought up three meetings ago at the, at the zoning commission and Melissa, I think it was you that read, read from the ORC. We were asked by Mr. Pearl, I believe, can we shelf this request to allow the new comprehensive plan to take place? And Melissa right, rightfully spoke, it has to happen within a certain time frame based upon the ORC. And I am not dumbing down anyone's statement, but sitting in a position position that is run or orchestrated by the ORC, which is Ohio Revised Code, there are so many little nuances that have to be followed. If we just say, screw it, if these people want to do this, cut the money, it is what it is, we could be audited, fined, and you know, punished because we didn't follow ORC. So as I understand your angst for commercial, you have to understand, in this case, the board side of it, there's legal precedence we have to follow. You know, I didn't bring Mr. Thorne to be rude and obnoxious. We have to protect what we need to protect legally. Otherwise, our butts are on the line. So with my question previously of that three to one ratio, is that with the building still? Oh, that was your original question. With it's with, with the building. And did you do an estimate of what it would be without the building? What it, let me get this right. What we had earmarked to do the demolition, if we turn that off and we sell it, there's a gain. And if so we take, you're not using the money to tear down the building. The gain, no, that's extra. Okay. So it's not like a oh we're going to save money, but oh we tricked you, we already got, got that money. No, it's a double. And it's a. It, you don't have an estimate without the building there. No, I have to imagine be almost less than half. I mean the building carries. Yes, it has problems. Yes, it has heating issues. Yes, you know, we couldn't charge all the Chromebooks because of the, because the electricity wasn't up to snuff, which were all drivers and moving. But it's still a evaluation for a use case in some level, whether it be a restaurant or, you know, a senior center. I'm just throwing stuff out. Who knows? But it has that ability to be something based upon a new owner. So sorry for the first question taking so long. But yes, together. Anybody else? Anyone else from the audience? Otherwise, I will go to the virtual yeah. audience. I'll and, go. Uh, okay. That's my wife. So if you want to feel bad for me. I've been on the receiving end of that once or twice. Um, Probably tonight. <laughs> it's pretty much guaranteed this is recorded. <laughs> um, Can you just state your name for the record? Andy Brockner, 1000 Center Road. Thank you, Andy. Um, so I just want to talk about precedent of... so precedent of trustees overruling the zoning commission is has that happened before um 
all over the all over and okay. the townships all over. And um, so if we wanted to sell our house and I was like, I think we can get more money if we get this rezoned, how would that go over if we were to approach you or anybody here? Like, you know what? I think Bob can get more. He's right down on the river. He could probably rezone this and make triple the money. What if, what would happen in that type of situation? He has the same right. Okay. We would. Yes. Okay. Good idea, Dude, <laughs> I want to cut. Elizabeth, come in comments to that? Yes. I, this isn't being funny, but I've been asked that 70 times. Once you move it to zone, or once you move it to commercial. Business. We don't have commercial. Sorry. Once you move it to the business, what would be the approach? I'm not really asking you. I'm just, well, people have asked me, what would you do with that property? And how would you then live in the area? That's what I get asked. So I don't know if you have any thought of that. Wait, restate that, sorry. Was... If, you sell your, if you sell your house, and or, I if, rezone it you rezone it and you sell it. it, what is it to become? Well, I wouldn't care because I'm getting three times the money and I don't live here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we all live here. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. And that was their response. Don Livingstone, 784 Stony Hill. I uh, support Mr. Bialowski uh, and the zoning board. I am totally against this. Sorry, I just think it should stay residential and the new owner decide what it be and then take it to the appropriate people when that happens. That's my say. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> What happened to the Kabbalah farm? That's a very good question. It's completely paused. I'm sorry, what was the reply? Kabbalah farm, which is the 87 acres on 303 right. near the Hinkley, old Hinkley Elementary School building that we're discussing this evening, that, that project has completely paused. Paused? Yes. Okay, so if they sell, that school gets sold commercial, what's stopping that farm being? I think the bigger question is if it, it stays residential, do they have enough acres to make a conservation development? Which they need 100 acres. It's not quite 100 acres. They can get it from other places. All you need is one resident who's willing to sell. So, yeah, okay, they can buy that school as residential. That land was up to. Well, I don't think it does. It, it is in contiguous. They there's, have to be there's contiguous. A, there's a space to be in the rear that they could connect to. Anyone else? Mr. O'Neill, step right up. Got <laughs> Paul O'Neill, 2398 Weymouth Road. Sorry, I just walked in. I was just bringing a cat back from Ohio State for veterinary hospital. Um, I have a question about who has the, the authority to dispose of this property. I understand the school board has authority to acquire property, and they do it with bonds. And they did such to build the new elementary school. But who has the authority to dispose of property? And I believe if you read Ohio Revised Code Section 3313.41, there's a certain procedure which is followed for the disposal of the property. One being that the town has the ability to acquire the property at the appraised rate that is one year old. Now, if the school board gets the property rezoned for commercial, they put it further out of reach of the town from acquiring it, which I believe raises some ethical questions. First, they're not tearing it down. That's a conversion. Second, they're trying to put it out of reach of the town, which is a second conversion. And it just kind of smells to me. And I think it should be brought up 
Oh, where is it? Well, I think if you dive into that section of the revised code, there's something that you could do when you think there's an ethics issue. And I think we have some ethics issues here. From the school board? From the school board. Or whoever has the authority of disposing of it. Who's, has the school board decided to dispose of it? You mean so? Yeah. yeah. And who has the authority to do that? Or who has made that decision? The school is the property owner. No, who on the board? Was it a un unanimous vote? Yeah. Okay, there you have it. So are you still questioning the validity of the ethics of the board? Yes. Can I speak to that Melissa? Yes. Thanks, Mr. O'Neill. Um, we did approach in a loose format the trustees. I forget at that point who they were, but we wanted to offer it to the township, and that's not in the plan right now. I'm not putting the township on the spot, but it would be our desire based upon how we do care about the property to offer it for, again, conjecture, uh, senior center, uh, youth sports facility, blah, blah, blah. That is not in the... Um, preview or the ability for the township to afford that at the moment. And that was at a reduced cost, not that we're Santa Claus, but, or that we want points for it, but we're just letting you know that that did take place, that conversation. So putting it out of reach for the township wasn't a goal. After we found out that that wasn't a possibility at really any dollar amount, this one we decided to go for the voters, if you want to talk about rules and regulations and responsibilities based upon ORC, was to get the most amount of money back. And I can repeat any of that. It looks like you're thinking through it. Yes, I, I believe there's some other parts of that uh, rule that you're supposed to make it available to other entities as well. We're supposed to make it available to other school districts, other like, um, what are they called? Charter schools. Thank you. Um, but you have to understand, as a school, publicly funded school, we are also allowed to tie, and this is not the right word, but like, Marcus, I know you asked me about deed restrictions. We're allowed to tie somebody, Marcus, you may have brought up um, certain types of hospitals or drug rehab. We actually had the discussion to line item those things out of future use. And one of the things was cutting those away from options. Uh, what was your last line that you brought up? The use case. Um, you know, okay, but we went through those to specifically draw away from things that would be frowned upon, a drug rehab center, things of that nature. Who did, you, who did you do that with? Our provided legal counsel and our board. Did you involve the town in any of that? We can't involve the town in any of those executive sessions. Oh, this is executive session, so that means the public's not allowed to they're they're it's not malicious they're created and designed to be able to do work the public board meeting is for the public to view and listen but those are work sessions that have to happen because you can't have everything out in open doors i see the smirk but that's how it works orc i see the smirk <laughs> uh, that's getting bad i just want to know what the shirt says does your shirt say O'Neill? And you're yes. Paul O'Neill. Impressive. <laughs> okay. Thank um, you. I've got one hand raised virtually. I'm going to go ahead and ask them to unmute. Um, Hi, this is Jim Burns, 216 Lake Crest Boulevard. I'd like to testify at the public hearing this evening. The floor is yours, Mr. Burns. Uh, thank you very much. Um, just real quick to address Mr. O'Neill's uh, comment. Uh, I was trustee. We were approached by the school board and the trustees discussed in public session front, in front of an audience that the township could not afford to take this property, even if it were gifted to us. There's too much building there that we'd have to maintain. It's in need of repair. So we either have a very expensive demolition bill and then a maintenance bill for anything that we kept. So this was discussed in front of uh, the public uh, and the board did give us the opportunity to get this. The money wasn't even discussed, but we turned it down for nothing. Um, the other part of that uh, uh, comment was um, the uh, the request to change this property to B2 should be permitted for several reasons. 
Hinkley Township has always placed Highland School District in highest regards and has been a great partner through the years. You can tell by the uh, support, the tax levies, uh, the enthusiasm and spirit of the town for the school. And this uh, request is coming from your school and it's for good reason. The school's responsibility is to fiscal responsibility and as fiduciaries of your tax paying money. They're responsible for maximizing uh, as, your, as taxpayers for you, maximizing the value of that property to get money back into the coffers so that you, they can afford to have a school that improves itself. That's their responsibility by ORC. This request well, it was being made by the school and that's why uh, I'm supporting it. Um, the six acre parcel has a building on it and it would be very expensive to demolish. Nobody's mentioned any dollar amount that I've heard yet, I might be wrong, but I've heard a $300,000 quote and a $500,000 quote to raise these buildings. So if that were the case in the six acre lot, which requires two acre minimums to build houses, would get three houses on it at best, it would be difficult for a residential builder to purchase the property for maximum value to the schools and then spend many hundreds of thousands of dollars to break down, the, to tear down the buildings before they even broke ground. As a former school, uh, it behaved as a small business. There was traffic and parking throughout the day, coming and going, sometimes on weekends and evenings, not unlike a small business, not unlike the B2 areas that we are currently have. If the property is left as a residential, it will stand idle. It will become an eyesore. Do remember the Richmond Elementary School that sat on 303 for a decade or more before it was torn down. Um, the other thing about this is thinking that water and sewer is going to stop development. Think about water as something that's essential for the public buildings of Hinkley, the town hall, the police department, and the fire department. Um, right now, our fire department has to go off-site to load up his fire trucks. He cannot use the well water. It would damage the machinery, and there's insufficient volume to fill the tanks. Um, some other things. Um, I'd like to ask at this time that uh, Trustee Asher will recuse herself. The trustees were elected to represent the, whole, represent the whole community and not a select group of loud, hypocritical bigots. Protect Tinkley does not represent the entire community, nor are they planning the community for the next 50 years, as is required when you're a leader as a trustee in the town. You must consider the impact of your decisions for many, many generations. Trustee Dashwell has clearly aligned herself with this small group and she has forgotten the rest of the community, myself included. Trustee Dashwell's family owns property very close to the property in question. Subsequently, she may gain a windfall, she may not. The guidance of the elect for elected officials in the state is clear. If there's an appearance of a conflict of interest, the officials should recuse themselves from voting. I'll be contacting the Ohio Ethics Board to draw attention to this matter if needed. And to clarify uh, public water usage further, um, the Pub Protect Hinkley put out a paper about public water saying that public water systems are funded by taxpayer dollars and bonds. That part's true. But what they left off of their comment was that as a private citizen, you would pay a sizable amount of money to refund the public for those costs should you tap in. I paid $15,000 to tap in on my residential house in another town. So I know it is the sizable amount of money. And they will. Somebody interrupting me? No. Okay. Like to. no okay. So, you know, as our, public, as our public buildings need water, better water from public, a public service supplier like Medina County, uh, we've got federal taxpayer dollars in our uh, coffers presently to supply that water to our township owned buildings and get our fire department the water they need. The well water would damage this machinery. Keep this in mind. This isn't relevant. Well, it, it isn't, but the township's brought I'm it up. Sorry, if you have not stated who you who you are speaking, you are not allowed to speak at this time. I'm going to ask you to mute yourself. You know, you got the, the, this thought that keeping water. Andy Brockno, one thousand seven. Still talking. The guy that texted you. This I'm this gentleman talking. is speaking right now. I'm still no, talking. No, Thank you. Sir, um, the um, this gentleman is speaking. You know, this is my original thought, sir. I, you know, you can think that uh, Mr. Wolney over there has some handle on me. Uh, you got to think the trustees have more than the next 10 years in mind, and they better. If they don't, they shouldn't be in that seat. They need to leave, think. Every one of you, probably most every one of you, had children. Where are they going to live? Where are they going to get their water? Do you think these well waters, oh, this well water is going to be present in good quality forever? It's not. Start planning for the distant future. I'm, I'm, Stop I'm calling people bigots. I'm thank, I'm thank you very much. I'm done. Uh, and, uh, and you got to be excused.
He didn't get elected. There was a reason. Thank you for your There's comments. There's something Mr. that Burns. you want to say as it pertains to that commentary. I'm just giving you the opportunity. Well, and Mr. I don't know who's there from Mr. Tinkley, but you interrupted him at least three times. And I will remove you if you do it again. Thank you. Um, no, to answer your question, that was not Mr. Burns who texted me. My wife texted me that my son got home from baseball, and then a classmate that I went to Hinkley Elementary with in the 70s and 80s texted me and said, we support you. That's all. So don't come at me and tell me that Mr. Burns is texting me back and forth. I am here. No, it's not. That's, that's one guy, and that's, that's my point. That's one guy in this community, as everybody has a seat in here, to share their feelings. He could be. They could be. I am aware of that. You are. I am. But I... I'm not texting Mr. Burns. You guys don't be darn I just. If, if this was broadcast all over the Yeah. You couldn't get the people in that parking lot that are against. So, and that's fine. And you're here to speak your piece. I'm here to speak mine. No, I'll say. So, I, I, no. And tonight it's just been nothing but ethics, 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 ethical this, ethical that. I am not here to better myself, better my family, even though we own half a Hinkley, which we don't. But, you know, to that extent, um, Monique, I don't say this conjecturally. I just, Medina County Planning Commission notified me that as a person who put a petition in to go through this, I have a hard time with you accompanying protect Hinckley to the Medina County Planning Commission meeting and rallying against a case that wasn't even heard here yet and causing conjecture to a case that hasn't even been sought before a board. So did not talk to him, but I was hoping, because I've been involved in first energy cases where I work with the school board and I've had to abstain. So based upon that comment, not the land comment, not the fact that your brother's on the zoning commission, just the fact that that is an ethical statement that has to be followed. I would do the same on the board. It's not an attack. Please don't see it that way. I just, it can't go hand in hand addressing the Medina County Planning Commission and then sitting as a deciding body or deciding member on a body. So again, I don't know that you were provided by your prosecutor. This is a legislative body. The Zoning Commission is a quasi-judicial body, but I wouldn't feel comfortable moving forward if that was the case, having already shared your opinion on a, on her case, that's my two cents. Um, that, thank you for sharing your two cents. Um, I did not accompany Protect Hinkley to the county meeting. I went on my own um, to speak of the emails that I had received, which I had all the printed emails that I had not received a single um, email from anyone, still have not. Um, saying that they support this rezoning change. So yeah. it's I, I consider there to be no conflict of interest. I do represent this entire community. I was voted for by this community yeah, I agree. To, to speak on their behalf. So I see no conflict of interest. Okay. It was just brought to my attention, so I had to go through and follow through the steps. And sure, ask. I just for the record, I'm part of the planning commission, and I don't know how you got there, but you did walk into the room with the key leaders of Protect Hinkley. I just that is a true statement. That's true. We did. We we all walked in together um, with Jim Larson and Nikki Long. I I don't refer to them as Protect Hinkley, but I refer to them as Jim Larson and Nikki Long. <laughs> I don't refer to them as Protect Hinkley, but when they send me an email and say, we protect Hinkley, Nikki Long, and Jim Larson, that's kind of symbiotic. Sure, I can completely understand your point of view on that. I do not consider them Protect Hinkley. Does anyone else in the room have anything yes, to say? my turn. <laughs> First of all, the Madonna County Planning Commission, oh, excuse me, Jim Larson, 20 Car Road. Thank you. Um, the ones I've meetings I've been to, there are any number of trustees from any number of townships talking about any number of different things. And I, you know, just for the 
rooms, you know, so they know what, what went on. Excuse me? Have you attended a plan planning commission meeting before? Yeah. Because you told me that that was your first one. No, no it, was, it was one before. Which one was it? Nikki was, I forget which one it was, but it was an eye opener. Anyway, I mean, you didn't even bother to attend. I got the minutes. I couldn't attend. Oh, well, that's too bad. A lot of us who care about this well, subject you know what, did. You told me I don't care about a lot of things a lot of times. Yep. It's not conjecture. I do care, but I couldn't make that meeting. Okay. So as I care about the building next door, even though I've said it three or four times, it can't be unsaid. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. And I'd also like to state very clearly that Mr. Burns, private citizen, an ex-trustee, is only expressing his opinion. It certainly isn't fact. And how he can turn this into a debate over sewer and water is really beyond me. And there's a really good reason that he isn't sitting in the front of the room. It's because nobody believed in him as a, as a trustee that they could follow and support. And it's just, it's just that simple. So, I mean, the, the question here really is simple. You have the ability to turn that variance down. As I asked the Indiana County Planning Commission any number of times, is there any consequence for turning it down? And they clearly said no, happens all the time. And that happens, and that goes for the trustees as well. I mean, that's, it's your prerogative to turn that down if you so chose to do so. Um, I could go on for probably two hours about the cluelessness and fecklessness and the damage that that 2015 comprehensive plan is done to this township. All you got to do is drive by, you know, 303 and 130th to see the epitome of how bad and how inappropriately used that comprehensive plan was. Mm -hmm. And well, like I say, that's a discussion for another time. So if you have the ability to vote this down, I certainly recommend you do it. And last but not least, speaking only as a resident for myself, I don't appreciate you bringing in tow an ex-prosecutor to imply who knows what, legal action, legal yeah, threats. No implied legal action. We well, how implied. could anybody conclude otherwise? That's why I said what I said. Here we go again. I say something and it's just off in the clouds. Well, it's not off in the clouds. I mean, Nobody's it, hearing me. I brought him because we have to. Nobody's answer. hearing you because you're not making any sense. That's, again, you could say So, that. anyhow, um, I would advise you to really consider Cindy's words and her deep analysis of that comprehensive plan. It is not holy writ. It is a guideline that you can uh, interpret, and it deserves to be interpreted in this case in the right way. Thank you. Mr. Larson, I have some questions for you. Yeah. Are you considered a leader of Protect Hinkley? No. Okay. I'm, a, I just I'm, an, a, I'm an active participant, and... You know, when you say protect Hinkley, you make it sound like it's a capital crime. Absolutely. And I'm and sure. and Jim Byrne I'm, I'm, and, and Jim Byrne, this is the second time that jerk has called us bigots. I looked up bigots and I'm not sure how the definition of bigot would apply to us as all we are is really concerned citizens that want nothing but the best for the township. I understand. To seek that. no advantage, no office know nothing other than what's best for the township. I just I prefer we stay on topic here. I, yeah, I, I think so topic. too. I want to ask how many protect Hinkley folks. I don't know that that's part of this. How, how many right how now. many email blasts were sent about this specific topic from protect Hinkley slash keep Hinkley world? Because it's the same now, right? This is a first amendment, a question of a first Yeah, I'm just gonna say why, uh, why would that excuse me one moment. This is not appropriate for a public hearing on a I'm, I'm asking Melissa. a question. Melissa, it is not appropriate. You need to listen to the public's comment. I think things have gotten I'm a asking little... a question because we keep getting the you same emails. You may ask emails. the question so how, when have you been sending out for have you been the trust Sending out emails hearing. as protecting police slash keep Hinkley rural. That's, 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 I, can, I, can, that's, I can truthfully tell you. Doesn't apply I have it. Excuse me. Okay. It doesn't apply here. Anybody can send an email that they absolutely. want to. Absolutely. Absolutely they can. But I'm just wondering why there it's verbatim language in all the emails. It doesn't matter. Getting. Well, that's I'm what, you know. I'm just asking a question. That's, what you, that's what you say. And we have asked you before 
to produce all of these emails that support your positions and you're never never able to. I don't They're deleted. Okay, you know what? Okay. I'm sorry. I know I have no that. standing here, but Mr. Walney represents the school. He has come here with a very, and I'm saying this as a resident, okay, and a 10-year trustee and a five-year, a six-year fiscal officer, whatever I am, and a 60-year resident, okay? He has the right, as anyone has a right, to come here, make a request in conformance with law and the Hinckley Township zoning resolution. He has done that. He has done it over and over and over again. You don't have to agree with them. And that is the purpose of this gathering. It is to express your opinions in a, in a, a respectful, factual manner. And we need to stay on the topic. I think for the most part, everybody has, but this is the public's opportunity to speak. Uh, the trustees will have a chance when this concludes and adjourns and they open Martha, their special I meeting. Disagree. I'm allowed to ask questions. I don't think they're appropriate, Melissa. And I think that Jack was, has said they're not appropriate. That was my question. I had two questions. Well, anyone else from the audience? Hi, Angela Chesnick, Country Brook Drive. Um, I have a question. When the property was offered to the township, was the building to be raised before it was offered to them? Or you would so Hinkley residents paid the school to tear down that building. It was put into a coffer. A coffer. But the money was earmarked. So you could have torn down the building and offered it to the township at a more reasonable rate probably and we would have been able to maybe possibly purchase it but now if we purchase it we have to raise the building and that would be money that we would have to come up with that was already earmarked i guess the township somehow okay, sorry. yeah the earmarked money could be the ear, right the earmark wasn't raised was put back basically. right but it, it was there and we actually were paying into those schools to be built the school is to be raised. But what you're paying now is reduced, maybe fractional. Yeah, but it would have been spread over Granger and Sharon and Hinkley. We would have, um, and Monfield Township, they would have all given to tear that down. Right. Why is it now, if we wanted to purchase it, we would have to tear it down? You have a nice park in Granger now. You have a nice park in Sharon now. What about Hinkley? Well, we don't get nothing. It's We're still, always like that. It's still a use case. I mean, it's still usable. Yeah, but you could have torn down the building. But then we respect the financial. We yeah, but but what about respecting Hinkley and Hinkley so, residents that have paid into right. the school system as much as everyone else in all the other communities? Right. You you just have forgotten all of us. No, You've neglected all of us. Yes, else, you have. It goes into what somebody else said. There's not just you guys. It's a whole faction of people. It's Hinkley yeah, and Sharon to Green. We're equal. We're equal you in are. Highland. We are equal in Highland. We are? No, we aren't. Because the building is still sitting there. Because it has value. Yes. Okay. Well, Somebody's going to have to tear it down because the building is not usable. No, it it rains through the ceiling. That's why we had to build another building. It's still a usable building. It's all different levels. You guys couldn't use it as a school. We can't use it as a school. That's what right, we're that's school, right. But it still has so now it, it's not something that could be used for the public. Yes, but it is. you want when we when we approached the township, our thought was a senior center, a community center with multiple levels. It wasn't used usable for children because yes. of the multiple levels. It was usable for multiple levels. No, not really. That was one of the reasons why you had to build a new school was because it, it didn't a, meet the new standards see. for the handicap, which is what you would, we would have had. Whoever bought it, if the township bought it, they would have to make those changes to the school to make it handicap accessible. These were the conversations we had in 2014. Okay. I, I can't go back and revisit what we already visited. I can. But we're going to talk in circles all night long. I'm not against you. I want to have a conversation with you. But when I say it has more valuation, you have to say, oh, that's his responsibility. He has to take more money back to the district. I don't, if you don't want to, tear, if you want to tear it down, I have somebody else who doesn't want to tear it down. 
I had parents at Sharon calling us weekly. My kids are wearing parkas on top and shorts on the bottom. It's so hot and so cold. So either I put your comment to rest and I deal with their comments, or I build a new building and put their comments to no, rest. No, I didn't say you didn't want to not build saying, another building. Right. I am saying that you should have torn down all three buildings. We are equal in high in you high are equal, but that, that statement doesn't carry its true weight. You're actually higher in this argument because it's worth more. You'll get more money back. I can't repeat that enough. Yes. Mr. O'Neill. Can I just, for the record, we never discussed a price when Highland Schools came to us with the offer of the school and the property. A price was not discussed at it's all. It's the maintenance price that you guys brought up that would be the problem. Yeah, may I speak to that because that was brought to the board and I explained to the board that if they never wanted to repair another road again, <laughs> they could consider buying because it wasn't a gift it was there was a purchase price and to melissa's point it was never stated but we have millions of dollars but close to three million of the six million we we have is tied up in levy money we cannot touch it it's for fire and police only so when you look at our our big budget you have to keep in mind that there's restrictions on those funds so we operate with general fund revenue and road and bridge revenue. The only source of funding we could use to heat, maintain that building, notwithstanding any capital improvements we would put into it, would have to come out of the general fund. $1.1 million every year is appropriated out of the township general fund for concrete. If you don't want to have your concrete roads maintained, then we could have had this conversation, but the trustees considered that and we just do not have the revenue to proceed in that direction. So it's, it, it is that the school did offer it to us, um, but it did not even get that far because it wasn't the sale price, wasn't what we buy it for, it's what the ongoing maintenance costs would be. Uh, Paul O'Neill, 2398 Weymouth Road. Uh, I'm kind of used to developers coming in to the town hall and asking for zoning changes, not school boards. Uh, I, I'm a little confused why a school board is acting like a developer. Uh, section 3313.41 gives you the ability to dispose or acquire real estate, but I don't think it gives you authority to ask for zoning changes. You're purporting that you're an ordinary citizen, what the school board is, mm -hmm. but they're not. They're taxpayer funded public fiduciary. Mm -hmm. And for you to come in here and ask for a zoning change, I think this is a breach of your fiduciary and you shouldn't be doing it you shouldn't be you should just be disposed if you're going to dispose of it dispose of it without the zoning change but any land owner has the ability to request a rezoning any private landowner no, say that. Land owner. landowner but you have to follow 3313.41 okay. there's nothing in there that says that you can ask for a zoning change. Maybe not the mayor, but it is a blanket statement. Landowners can request rezoning. <laughs> yeah, but you're more than a landowner. You're a school board. I understand that. But that school is, boards have further requirements. Than, a lot of my arguments tonight is our further requirements, <laughs> all the ORCs that we have to follow. I don't get this, I'm not saying you do, but I don't get to sit down at my kitchen table and say, I'd like that not to be a general dollar or a general, dollar general. I have to go and look at as a ORC driven board member, what happens when I return this back to the public and we didn't get X for it? We'd be crucified. Maybe not by all of you or half of the people or half the people on the phone, but the majority would be torqued off that we didn't get the right amount of money back. And I, I think if you don't follow the uh, revised code. Well, following and what, again, not labeling you, but what one thinks it says is two different things. I'm not going to get into an argument with you, but reading off the ORCs 
And we've gone to our legal counsel, which we retain, and asked for guidance. We have to ask for guidance. You know, let me give you an example. So what have we gone through for the past two years? I'm not picking on you because you have a mask on, but we have masks and we had protocols. All of that was derived and given to us. Everybody thinks that school board can sit there and say, I hate masks. I love masks. I like vaccines. I hate vaccines. We cannot vote on our own commission. Okay. I can't just go down and say, you know what, damn it. Little Johnny got sick and I don't want to see that kid. I'm going to make him wear a mask. That's, that, that, that's not even remotely close to what can happen. We have to follow the health department. We have to follow the ORCs. Now, a little secret, not all five of us agreed every day. It doesn't matter. We had rules to follow. We had ORCs to follow. So when I come in here and I act like a human being or, or, or a, a, you know, just a citizen, that's fine. But that's not my position right now. I have to follow the ORCs. So you're bringing up the efficacy, efficacy ethical stuff. You're bringing up the, the, the ORCs. I have to follow that stuff. So we did our homework. And we have to use our counsel because if we don't protect ourselves, and this is the reason I brought the masks, <laughs> if we don't follow with the guidance from the state and the guidance from the health department, and we go out on our own and we say, all right, everybody's free to do what they want. And then that one parent, like that one property owner on Weymouth Road that's up in front of me right now, that one parent, somebody's kids get sick or whatever happens, and they sue us. We are liable, which makes you liable, which takes away all the funding for all the buildings and all the teachers and all the classes. So because of our responsibility to the ORC, to the ethical portion of things, we have to, I have to bring a Mr. Thorne with me because we have to make sure every step along the way, we don't screw up little Johnny's education because we decided to go rogue and own the whole thing ourselves. Well, then why don't you propose putting a nuclear power plant in there or something? I mean, it doesn't I'm, fit the zoning. I know well, what you're proposing doesn't fit the zoning either. What am I proposing? I'm to, proposing a change of zoning which is in the opportunities of the land owner. Sorry, I'm not being a prick. Just, it, it's, I'm, I'm repeating myself over and over again. The land owners are allowed to make this request, period. If we, if we have to get judicial, go to a judge or go to ORC, we can. But that's not what we, we've been told. We've been given the purview that we can make this request. Define landowner. A landowner. Somebody who's in the district who owns property. If you go to tax maps right now and you look at that parcel number, the one Melissa read off, it says Highland School Board, property owner. Show me in the revised code where it defines landowner. I, tonight's not for that. Okay. That's what but I need to know. Advised, because you're a school board. You're not a landowner. You're a school board. And as a byproduct of being a school board, you own land or you lease land. But that's a dangerous statement because <laughs> as soon as it gets legs here, it's going to grow and that could not be the truth. I, I think you're going to be running into a lot of debate on this. We could be, but we're here because we filed a petition with the Zoning Commission. It was accepted by the Zoning Commission. We had three Zoning Commission meetings. It's now been handed off to the Board of Trustees. So all those checks and balances, we're still moving along is the point, which means it's allowed based upon the code. I feel like I'm in speech class. I, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Walden, quick, uh, Tom Schrader, uh, Walden Ridge. Yes, sir. The, was there an original estimate to tear down the building? All three. Uh, was it clustered together? No, it's, it's separate, but the same cost. Of, about. So what was the cost to tear down the building? Just curious. 680. 680? Yeah. Okay. And what's the current value as it stands? I don't know if I can say that. I'm sorry, I know it's funny, uh, but I, I can't. I can give you the one to three ratio, but it's, it's more than that, put it that way. So 680 was returned then to the general fund? Yes. And 680 what was spent to tear down the other buildings? 650. It's just square foot. Similarly priced. Yeah, square foot. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Cindy Engelman, Ridge Road. So I just um, comment. I think it probably was disingenuous in whatever decision the Board of Education made in returning that money to the general fund at the time they requested the prior trustees whether they were interested in purchasing the land. Because clearly, Martha, um, you know, I think your statement was well-founded, but if there was no building there and it was only grass, maybe that would have been a different discussion um, last and year or the year before. That wasn't the discussion. The discussion was with the building. Right. I'm saying if, if you know, this was a, a decision by the board 
to return the money to the general fund and and come to the township at that time and ask them if they wanted to, to purchase the land, which would have put that burden on the township. And, you know, there's an adage that says poor planning on your part, you know, shouldn't be a crisis on our part. But see, those taglines don't really carry much water. We weren't poor planning. We planned to do what we had to You're do. Right. You, we gave it back. It's you, it was, it was yeah. deliberate planning. You're no. right in this case because yeah. it was you can't, you can't, you can't it was it sit there and just talk under your breath and say you did this you did this you did this well but it, but you did you made a decision to return it to the general fund yes. and yet you still have on your website that Websites you're going to it didn't change for that I mean I, I, well I, that that's a communication tool and not what old. where was the communication tool then on the website that said simply that we're not going to tear down Hinkley Elementary we return that money. Three meetings ago. Mm -hmm. Three meetings ago. And, and how many times do we so, go around on the same? So side? let me ask a question. When was that money returned to the general fund? I'd have to ask Neil, our treasurer. What year was that money returned to? I don't know. Probably this year or this year or last year because that's when the decision was made to put it up for sale. Okay. That's all I have. But those are purviews of a board of education with a financial treasurer that can make those decisions. If it's a down, like I explained with the millage, it's fine. If it's an up, it's back to the public. Anyone else? Question. <laughs> Dave Masarin again. I um, have a question that doesn't have to do with ethics. It has to do with money. Uh, help me find some information regarding the total construction costs associated with the bond issue. Where can I find that information? Is, is it's public? Public? Now, uh, excuse me. Publicly available. I'm sure it is. Yes. Where can I find that? I'd start on the school website. I, I, I searched and could not find it. Okay. So I'm asking for your assistance. Well, then I'll get your contact information and we'll get you the numbers. Are you looking you, for a breakdown by building? I'm looking for a complete breakdown on what was budgeted. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know how much was spent according to the budgeted items. Okay. Were you over? Were you under? I'd like a detailed, complete breakdown. That's public. I'd like to have you help me find that. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. I was just a rough crowd, so uh, <laughs> bear with me. Uh, I have no knowledge of the, obviously, the dispute uh, the community has correct. with the school. It's William Thorne, correct? Right. Okay. With the school and what is or was not. Uh, I was simply here to, to emphasize some points on the zoning. And as the one gentleman pointed out, your, your plan uh, is a plan. It is a guideline. And specifically in there is a guideline for what, how you make decisions and where your land is rezoned or how it's going to be rezoned. Uh, I would dispute, and I think if you look at the map, your future land use map clearly shows this property as part of the, of the town center. I don't think there's any dispute if you look at the map. It's, it's there. In terms of the, the concerns about what can be done with this property if it's rezoned, uh, what can be done is what's in the zoning code. That controls it. They, this is a guide. It's not the actual zoning law. The zoning law becomes new zoning codes. If the, you as a community don't like the uses that can go in the town center, you go to the zoning commission and ask them to change it. They can change those uses anytime they want. It's got to go through the process, but it can be done. But as I said before, a property owner, when they go to sell land, generally doesn't know, even if it's a residential property, you don't know if you sell your residential property, whether the new buyer's going to rip the home down, whether he's going to put up a duplex, going to put up a double, he'll put up whatever the zoning code allows. So those just one to bring out. Most of the things here that I'm hearing have really nothing to do legally and procedurally with the zoning question before you. It, it appears most of the issues here deal with what the school board did or didn't do with the property or should have done or shouldn't have done. That's not the considerations that you're being asked to deal with tonight. You're being asked to consider in light of your comprehensive plan whether this property should be resolved. Now, you don't always have to follow a comprehensive plan, but if you don't, you should have some reason. And as, as far as I understand at this point, even though your, your uh, uh, audit, if you will, is what you referred to, it was supposed to be done in April. As I understand, nothing has been done. So there's no indication that any changes will be recommended. 
And even though the people don't like the 2015 plan, I'm sorry, he's speaking. I said, as far as I know, I, I checked. I could not find anything that was submitted uh, where the members of the board said they hadn't made any any uh, formal changes. But if they have, then fine. And then I was told wrong. That's why I said that's what as far as I know. But right now, the 2015 plan is what you have in place. And that's what you're supposed to be following. So if you don't follow it and you have a good reason, if they really had a proposal before the board to rezone everything, that would be probably a valid reason to say, no, we, we're already in the process of changing this. But it's my understanding that is not the case. Don't know. Is that the question? Mm -hmm. um, I've gone through the comprehensive plan extensively. So many of the same things that. Right. A question for you. Uh, do you see anything in there that stipulates when a future use needs to be implemented? Is there anything in there that says no. there's any kind of a timeline that it needs to be done no. by? No, it's, a, guide, it's a guideline to deal with changes that they come. You have a change that's come in. A request. A request, and it's being done consistent with the plan. So that would, that would follow. But there was nothing saying that the yeah. squad to do it today, tomorrow, yesterday. Okay, yes, there is no, there is no guidelines. No, timeline, no, guidance no there. it's a guidance for the future development of the township until you change the plan. Like I said earlier, if, if you're not going to follow the plan, then don't, don't adopt it. Then, then you would rely on your existing zoning. And the court, the courts have said that the existing zoning can be a plan in and of itself, as long as the changes are consistent with it. But you spend a lot of money on two different occasions to come up with a plan. So generally, as it was said you follow those plans. That's why they're there. That's why you do it. And the, a lot of these other issues just are irrelevant to the zoning issue before you. I'm not saying they're not valid and not good criticism or bad criticism, but they're not the issue that's before you tonight. Thank you. Anyone else? Do we have anyone virtually that would like to raise their hand? Okay. If no one else has anything else to say, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the hearing at 8.12 p.m. Second. Seconded by Swedek. Get a roll call, please. Asheril? Yes. Swedek? Yes. Augustine? Yes. And do you want to take a break before the special meeting? I'm okay. I'm fine. Okay. You? Nope, I'm good. At this time, I would like to open the special meeting. You go on back in. I've got to get the purpose. Yeah, I don't want to kick everybody. Do you want this recorded too? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, might as well, okay. just in case. Mm -hmm. We're just going to continue it for con continuity's sake then, since we're going to still be recording. I just have to get my language for the special meeting. So you're, you're, you're opening this special meeting at 8.12? Yeah. At this time, I'd like to open the special meeting for the purpose of, and I can't find it, discussion and decision on the MAP amendment at 8.13 p.m. I have a roll call, please. Just for... Uh, Asheril? Yes. Swedek? Here. Uh, Augustine? Here. Okay. We've heard from the public. Um, my questioning specific to Mr. Larson was because many of the emails that I received all had the same exact language in them. And I just wanted to see um, how many email blasts went out with regard to this. Do you have anything that you would like to speak on or offer? Mr. Wolney, was there any reason other than to generate additional income behind the request to rezone it as B2? Um, as we walk down this road tonight of ethics and just procedure, mostly procedure, um, I, and I think you can appreciate this, and I, and I want everyone to appreciate it, there are certain roles that we all fulfill, whether it's at this table, the table back at the school, um, and whether it's wanted to be believed or not, the real reason for the request was to provide 
and I sound like a broken record, as much finance back to the district. So I don't see that as a passing statement. I see it as a number one reason, top statement. If it doesn't pass, it still sells. Somebody else can go fight for what they want, whether they have a plan or not, that wasn't the point. But I think that the public must understand that it wasn't done to better ourselves, it was to better the general fund, 001, period. So I know you asked me in all seriousness. I, I asked, you, absolutely, yeah. that's what I'm asking because if, if I'm looking at the comprehensive plan, yeah, which is what you're relating this to, this entire thing, it, it behooves us to look at what benefit mm -hmm. the town derives out of that. Right. So is just expanding the B2 space in and of itself a benefit to the town without somebody here saying, this is what I'm committed to doing. This is what I want to do. Right. This is why I want to have it be too. Right. Without having that there, is there anything that's, you know, dr well, that we're going to benefit out of it by granting this mm -hmm. ahead of time before somebody does come with that? Well, I think, yeah, obviously we've, we've all thought that and it's a valid question. And I, I just, I hate sticking to the, and I'm not asking you this per se, but why is that my responsibility? What the next owner does with it? Do I care about it? Yes. But can I control that? No. So why did we do it? I think we looked at this plan and again, I get it. It's hard to take emotion out of this. You know, um, I want not being emotional. No, not you, not, not you, not, not you. you. Thank you for clarifying. I just think there's been, I'm not even talking in the room tonight. I'm talking the last six months. There's been a lot of emotion. People have, I want to see certain, certain me, Chris, want to, I want to see certain, certain, certain things happen to it. Okay. But I don't have any control over that. I can't buy it. Um, what I like to see it happen, but I'm sure somebody does. But I think that section right there, I mean, I, before I worked, my, I got my degree at Baldwin-Wallace in computer science. Before I worked and did that, I was a drafter for an engineering firm. I lived and died by tax maps. That's a picture of tax maps, which calls out each site and, you know, property owner. Um, that's just a, looks like a picture of a red key to me upside down and it's missing a specific land piece that just makes sense to make it contiguous. That's a common argument, common word, contiguous properties. Um, so it just thought comprehensive plan calls for the option for landowners to rezone. It's mentioned in 2003. It's mentioned in 2015. That is the I don't end. want to go down that road again. I understand that yeah. part of it. That That's what drove us to do that. It can be there. Yep. It can be. Is it, but is it something that is now the time to do that <clears throat> without? Right. Well, and again, to that point, whose decision is it to call the time? Mr. Pearl, I'm not picking on you. He did ask us to shelf this. I asked the trustees. Well, true. During that meeting. You. You're good. Um, you know, whose decision should that be? And I think as a landowner, you know, we, we've had a number of conversations in this room the last six months, whether it be zoning or whatever the case may be. Um, there was a lot of topics brought up, a lot of things talked about. I felt like, not in my case uh, specifically or exclusively, but in my case, the landowner in any property was uh, not given the full rights of a landowner. You know, this piece of property here is being, you know, gone over with a fine tooth comb. And I understand it's because it's a school. It's not just, I'm a resident with a house, but I, you know, using those simple terms, I can't dig into waiting this we've requested. Another reason financially is every month we have to pay the maintenance that, you know, Martha brought up that, the township would have to pay if they assume the building. So we have to pay, you know, when it's hot, hot, there is no cooling, um, electricity, lights, you know, that's, it's not a penny, it's some cash, but those are things that we gave ourselves a certain window of time and we're coming close to eclipsing that window of time. So we couldn't just future date it and keep going. So to your point, to your question, it's very financial, both from a spend and a gain side. Hope that's clear. Thanks for your comments. Thanks, sir. Chris, I just have um, a couple things. Yes. Um, 
I'm going to try to treat you with more respect than you treated me since you did just question my ethics. Well, I, it was, um, it was guided to me. It, I'm certain it was guided. Not by anybody in this room. Okay. I want to go back to, because I understand, I, I complete, take the emotion out of it. I completely understand your point of saying, you know what? If we can get more money for it, let's get more money for it because you have to be fiscally responsible. Okay. We just had a little hot button issue last month in this boardroom about that, just trying to be fiscally responsible. So I can understand that and I respect that. But I want to go back to your analogy because it just kind of stood out to me what you said. It was one of the first things that you said. To the, today or previous? Today. Okay. Um, if you plan to build a garage, but your plans change, right? Yeah, yeah. Plans, plans change. That's what you keep going back to, saying the plans change. If you, I, I agree that can happen, but if I ask somebody to pay for my garage and then I take their money mm -hmm. and then my plans change, that's a different story than just saying, well, my plans changed. Do you, do you understand the difference between that? But did you give back the money? I, I haven't seen anything back yet. It went back into the coffers basically. It went, so you put it back into the general fund instead. It, it was allocated to tear down the building. Mm -hmm. Anything so that's left. It went back into the general fund. Any, no, and, it, I, and I don't, I don't want to get too off topic on I it. Won't. It, it, it goes back into millage, a reduc reduction of millage. Okay, but when did that happen? Because we did also just pass a permanent levy last year. Mm -hmm. So when did that happen? Well, the bond and the levy are separate. The, bo okay. the bond was for the construction. Okay. The levy is for operation. Okay. Monies that unfortunately not... I shouldn't say that money that cannot cross lines. Um, so the bond money gets returned and I forget the gentleman I spoke to about bonds or millage, but maybe you're right. yes, um, the, the millage you see as a reduction in your taxes. Now, ironically enough, another levy could be passed by say, I won't use Hankley as an example, but say you live in Sharon and your school taxes went down, but they passed a road levy. So it's in the gate. Mm -hmm. but not something I could control. Mm -hmm. So the monies that were part of the bond, whatever wasn't used gets returned. It's like um, a garage house, take out a line of credit on your house or home equity refinance, whatever you don't use. Sure. You can keep, but in this case, it's a school you give back. So two different lines, bond versus levy. The levy is for operation. Okay. Um, and that's something that, you know, Martha had a couple of months ago, like kind of um, a state of the township, you know, explaining, right. and maybe that would be beneficial for the school to do something. State like, of? Yeah. Kind of, you know, explain, explain where everything, you know, where, what money is mm -hmm. coming in and out, right. that type of thing. Um, and then the other, the other comment you made is, would this scrutiny happen over anyone, over if it was another owner, property yeah. owner trying to rezone? Um, I hope so. Well, it would from a use case yeah. standpoint. I certainly hope so because to rezone something right. is it's a not big deal something that we do lightly. It is, but it wouldn't be a school. That, that was my point. Right, but it's still it's a huge deal. Oh, it's big. And to increase, you know, to do it solely so that someone has more money was to stop anybody from but, doing it. Yeah, that was. And then the other thing I did want to mention, I didn't want to mention it in the last one because we weren't supposed to be doing the talking in that one is. A dollar general, a dollar general could go there. Mm -hmm. A dollar general is the average retail space in a dollar general is 7,500 square feet. So let's just figure maybe another 3,000 square feet for office and back storage. That's right. well within the 12,000 square foot minimum. So I, I, was, I didn't want to correct that because that is very possible. I just pulled that from the last zoning commission meeting that we had. Okay. That's, I don't know how much they need or what they want, but if, from that... From that conversation that we had, and all the lots of lots of different things right. that don't what I feel. Fits but is the would that be considered commercial though? It's retail. Okay, because that was the zoning commission conversation that we had with um, Marcus and the entire group last time. But thank you. I I don't know what the numbers are. Anybody else? A lot to say. <laughs> so you can sit down. Oh, thank God. Um, as has been mentioned here before, ORC 519.02A, the Board of Townships Trustees may regulate by resolution in accordance with the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan is our directive. 
That's outlined in Ohio Revised Code. We're a township. We follow Ohio, Ohio Revised Code. We're not a city. We don't have ordinances. This is how we do things. This is how we do business. Um, reason why purpose, components to monies, all these different things are not a part of our, they should not be a part of our decision. We are tasked with, does this fit with Hinckley zoning? That's it. And when I look back at the minutes from the county um, planning commission, planning director Denise Testa answered that typically staff does not consider monetary position because it's not relevant. If someone comes to staff with future plans and what they want to build, planning does not regulate what they're going to build in the future. But we in Hinkley Township do. We have a zoning resolution that defines what can be put there and what can't be put there. Board member at the uh, County Planning Commission stated that the property owner has requested a zoning change and they have the right to do that no matter the motivation. I'm not tasked with what Highland Schools is doing. I appreciate what everyone is saying. I appreciate your frustration and maybe how Highland's handled this, but I'm not a representative of Highland. I'm a representative of Hinkley Township. So I put this picture up for you to see. The proposed site is right here. And when I look in the comprehensive plan, you could read this comprehensive plan a million ways. You guys have all proved that tonight. It's all about perspective. Page 21 says, enhance the town center. Hinkley Town Center is a social and civic hub of the township. Here, residents generally want to see a higher level of quality buildings and public spaces and amenities, along with additional small scale businesses to serve the community. Figure 2.4 shows the desire for both growth and preservation in the area, indicating a desire for some expansion while keeping the small town character. So then I looked up, what is expansion? The act of becoming larger or more extensive. So what I did then is I went to the future land use map because that's where our extension is planned. And it is here. The future land use map shows this property as business. It was designated in 2015. Again, ORC says that we are to make this decision based on what our comprehensive plan says. <clears throat> That's our directive. So then I go back to the comprehensive plan. This is something that you have questioned. Page 38, objective LU4, grow consistently with the future land use map. Make future development and zoning decisions that support the implementation of the future land use map. That's a comprehensive plan. So I said, you know what? I can see it here in the comprehensive plan. It's pretty black and white to me, actually. But I'm still going to go to the residents of Hinkley, and I'm going to have conversation. And let me tell you, I had conversation with the residents of Hinkley. And some of them are in this room, and some of them are not. When I talked to the people of Hinkley, many of them were afraid to be bullied. That's why they said they didn't want to have conversation about this. I posted on Facebook. I sat with people at Hoppy Dudes. I talked to people in the park. I talked to people everywhere for the course, course, maybe two, three weeks. Um, because I can see every side of this conversation. I can see the Kabbalah Farms was paused when this map amendment happened. That's the 87 acres that sits almost directly next to this building. I could see that this building could potentially be used as a resident, residence. Somebody could come in and they could live there. I can see this in angles and ways that probably half the people in the room have never even thought of. That's why I went back to the people of Hinkley so I could get even more views. So this is what happened. Because I cannot do my job effectively and efficiently unless I'm representing the people of Hinkley. So today when I vote, my vote is gonna represent the people I spoke to. When I spoke to over 220 people, 63 said they wanted residential and 158 said they wanted business. Some of the comments that they made, how does it affect the surrounding properties? Is it most surrounded by buildings that, and that the township should offer more business activity? We have enough residential. Hope that people understand that if it stays residential, there's equal opportunity to bring in water and sewer. The land lends itself to business as it has sidewalks to it and has become accustomed to high traffic. 
If it stays residential, the current building could be used as a home for many people. When I think of this type of living arrangement, it would be similar to a compound or pod living because we do not have a definition of what a family is. That would be bad for our town and our schools. Preserving Hinckley means preserving the building for sustainability and preservation. The only way to preserve the building is to make it a business. I'm going to speculate, and this is from Mr. O'Neill, that if the zoning isn't changed, the Highland Board of Education will sell the property with the building as an improvement, which may be used, of course, as residential, which brings forth a lot of really interesting developmental possibilities. Keeping Hinckley rural means no more houses and subdivisions. The center of town is different. Parking is a problem downtown and we need to keep that area business. 25 to 50 year old plan should show a strong town center and that should be the trend. Reinvigorating walking and a true quaint town center. Enhance the commerce of town and go into mom and pop shops. We cannot stop growth, but we can control it. That has the flavor of rural. We don't want any more developments. The developable land is either being, is being eaten up in other towns. We don't need more residential. We need commerce. It makes sense to make it business since there has been no growth of the B2 business district in the last 10 to 15 years. Keep business growth where it is planned to be. And I refer you to the map again based on that comment. If it stays residential, the school will probably leave the building there and it will be blight. Enhance, of, enhancement of a true town center was mentioned to me multiple times. We will outgrow the schools if we let more housing in. Eastern piece of the property ensures protection between business and residential. And there's a little sliver of a piece right here that would ensure that protection. Make Hinkley a designation area because of Hinkley Lake or destination area, I'm sorry. A lot of people said that as well. Want to see affordable senior housing because we want to stay in Hinkley. There are people that live in Hinkley and want to have a business in Hinkley. I'm confused that people who say they don't want any more houses in Hinkley want to keep it residential. I don't want new houses or a huge mansion next to old homes in town center. I like what happened at Binky Commons and hope that someone will buy the school and make it a business conglomerate. I don't think that houses belong in town center. Those are just some of the comments that I heard from folks that were afraid to come here because they didn't want to be belittled. So I value their comments as much as yours. And I took a quick vote, if you will, based on the commentary that actually applied to what we're doing here tonight. And only a couple of you stood up and said, I'm opposed or I'm for. I have three opposed and one for. A lot of you made commentary, but you didn't say what you wanted. I want the MAP amendment approved or I'd like to see it denied. So again, I'm going to take my directive from the comprehensive plan, like Ohio Revised Code tells me to do. But then I'm going to take my directive from over 220 people that I talked to, as well as the people that were here tonight. I'm not discounting that he had a reason for asking, the board had a reason for asking. Well, my question was, were there any other reasons that he had? What I was looking for is, did you have an investor who was interested in doing something with that property and, right. and that we could consider? Right. But outside of that, I... But that's not a very... Well, when we discussed this. There were numerous people that came to us wanting walkthroughs, which we granted. But again, to slice things, our responsibility stops there and the decision of this board stops there because the next owner would have to go in front of the zoning commission. So I'm not trying to be short of my answer, but I as, understand that. but and as a, and I agree with that. Yes. That, I don't, I just don't understand how a creating additional piece of business property at this point, just for the sake of doing it. I do not think aligns with the comprehensive plan. I'm sorry, I don't. No, that's fine. I, I just don't think we're doing it for that sake. It's our responsibility. It, and 
I respect that as your yeah. responsibility. It's your job to get the biggest bang for the buck for the school system. I get that. Right. But it's also our job to watch out for what's going on here in town center. Right. As well as the rest of the township. And I think your protective measure there is the zoning commission. Well, my protective measure here is that the zoning commission is also there as well. It's a backup as well to what we decide to do. Right. And the, you know, the local zoning commission, not to be confused with the planning commission, stated things of the same nature. It's not time. We don't think so. And that's why, again, I'm not, I, I don't want to fight those words, but we use that as an apparatus to, to, to kick this off. And that doesn't say that we have to do it right now. That's a future use plan. No, you don't have to do it right now. Again, not conjecture, but when a request comes across, there is a certain amount of time. That's the only guideline. But to, to go back, to, that's why I read page 38. Make future development and zoning decisions to support the implementation of the future land use map. That's the directive. That's what this map says. This map says this is the future land use map, and this is our job to develop future zoning decisions and support the implementation of this map. Yeah, but and it has if nothing you to do also with look elsewhere in that plan, it talks about you know what kind of things should go in there right but we can't decide that half of this question today right that's that's my point to that, when i when commission has a zoning resolution to identify those things when, when we decided to physically show up and fill out that physical form for this request it was based upon the language of request only not use case after and i'm i don't want to beat it like a dead horse but that's what drove i spoke before about legal counsel and what should you do and how should you proceed? Mm -hmm. Those legal words were the words we used to bring us to this point. I fully understand what you're saying. What is I'm, I'm looking at this as you being a homeowner. I totally am yep. because you are a landowner. You're, you're the, you're the guy on the title, mm -hmm. you're the guy on the deed. And you're saying, I want to do this. And I'm going to say, see you later. Leaving us to deal with the aftermath. Well, I think deal with, like, you know, we talked about when, when Martha brought up the fact that, you know, not behind closed doors, but let's be honest, a lot of the actions of the school board, um, some of it's just not, you know, it happens behind the scenes. When we came and talked, it wasn't hidden, but it was a local to local conversation. Hey, what do you think? Is this possible? We'd like to do this for the community. We don't walk away and say, we're done. We cared you know, I, again, I wanted to see a, a senior center of some effect. I'm not blaming the trustee board for not having that ability. Martha laid out clearly what the monies are for. You know, we just talked about bonds and levies. We're a township. Right. So those responsibilities, you know, we, we didn't just throw it away. We had the conversations. We built the conversations. We went through the what ifs. We went through the hows. The only reason we landed here is because of, like I said, the comments in here, the codes in here. And that's what drove us to this podium. That's it. And I guess that's really where we land is the legalese of this brought us here. So thank you. I don't know if you read the planning commission minutes, but they said um, there were people there. There was a board member that said that the, the um, we're bound to follow the current comprehensive plan. And it seemed very clear to her that the recommendation must go forward because it does follow the comprehensive plan. Now, was that one of the um, two people at the county who said as members of the county planning commission, we have to vote yes for it. But as a trustee, when this comes to me as a trustee, I'd vote no for it. Well, she said that because you had designated that you weren't in favor of it based on the emails you had received. I, I don't think that is fair to assume that you know what she's, that is exactly she said what she said. In the she said exactly what she said. She said, as a trustee, I wouldn't vote for it. But as a member because of the Medina of County Planning presented. Commission, because of what based presented. off of the, based off of the comprehensive plan, that's why she said that. And I think I agree that the comprehensive plan is, open to interpretation with that, with the enhanced town center, um, improved town center. I think that that is open to interpretation. So I want to talk about 
the um do you, you made the statement do you think that the map is open to interpretation um i that the the proposed map and i said this at the county meeting also to extend um or to to grant this the future map part goes partially through that parcel Correct. not the entire Which was mentioned not the entire yes. parcel so what I wanna talk about is, cause I saw it on social media and you just mentioned it again, is the mom and pops. You'd like to see a mom and pop. I didn't say that. That was what someone told me that I read. Okay, you just said it. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm bringing this up again. Is, yeah, I met with um, the fire inspector because I was curious if we're going to rezone this as business and we're gonna leave the building, which is gonna be approximately a million dollars is what mm -hmm. the appraised sale price was for it, little over a million. And I said, okay, what needs to be done to this building? Because we already know that there's a lot of issues with this building. So what would need to be done from the fire inspection side of it to get it up to code? They would need new uh, sprinkler systems. They would need new tanks like the new school has for water storage. Um, they would need a new generator, a water pump. The fire alarms would probably need to be expanded. He said most likely it would be about a million dollars to bring it up to code. So now, and that's just fire. That is just fire. That's not talking about a new roof. That's not talking about the electrical. That's not talking about the other issues that have to be done within this building if it goes to business. So we are talking about, and let's just use round numbers for the sake of ease, we are talking about a $2 million investment just for fire and just to purchase it. What kind of mom and pops business can afford that? That's, that's a big question. Then I also just wanna add that I did speak to the new property owner on Friday. He just bought the parcel of land between Asheville Studios and the historical building. And he gave me permission to share this. Um, because his realtor came to him and said that he didn't know if it was Dollar General or Family Dollar is already asking if they can purchase the land. So they're already looking. They're already looking in Hinkley. But so are other people. I mean, I, that, that's not a variable. It, it's there, a there variable a lot for of me. People. It's a variable There are a lot of people me. that are looking. I've talked to a lot of people who have plans that they've heard of. It's, that, it's that, a for variable for me. And when you talk about residential... <clears throat> versus business it's unfortunately i think we are at a point where you have to choose the lesser of two evils with it and i would rather see three new homes versus a dollar general or a family dollar in that spot i mean we, if you just think about the corner of west 130th and 303 we've had at least 10 different companies come through with interest in it doesn't mean that many of them are actually came to fruition right but there's nothing banning those doors in our zoning right now. It fits within the zoning. It has to be under 12,000 square feet and it's retail. It fits within our zoning. There would be no reason why we would say no to it. So do you feel that you're ready for a motion? Because I have to come up with one. Or Is just, there anything else you want? I mean, I, I have received, um, I didn't count all my conversations. I've had countless conversations, but I have received um, 22 emails yeah. Yeah, and 14 yeah. phone calls from yeah. residents yeah. who have reached out to me and they've all said, no, there was one person. He's here. There was one person who mm -hmm. said he would like to see it um, remain or go to business. Everybody else and countless countless conversations at the parade, you know, up at Foster's over, over the course of months, countless conversations. I haven't heard of anybody say that they would be for this. <clears throat> this is not what he told me to use. <laughs> Well, where's your language? He said for me to make an adopt or deny the recommendation of the zoning commission and then read the, that part. Okay, well, that's fine. I mean, but that that is part of you. He didn't say resolution. Yeah, I know I got to read all yeah, the Yeah, you need a resolution. Yeah. And you'll also need an effective date. Um, I want to give Kathy a call for a second. Okay. Absolutely. Bill. Bill. 
needs to be a resolution by the board, correct? Oh, or the number? Okay. Thank you. Do you need an effective date included? We don't need an effective date. ORC says 30 days. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. That's the effective date. <laughs> I'm more retired than that. I was thinking maybe I would. He's talking to the superintendent. At this time, I'd like to just take a five minute break. Mm -hmm.
We're back in session. Mr. Wolney, did you want to approach the Thanks. Just so you know, the microphone is not for the room, it's for the virtual world. Right. <laughs> um, sorry for the interruption. I asked the board if we could have a, uh, a timeout recess. Um, Monique, Monique, when you brought up the Dollar General, it made me think of something, the square footage. Mm -hmm. I went to bed that night after Marcus's and the Zoning Commission's meeting thinking, oh, we can't have a Dollar General. Good. Square footage doesn't work. Thank you for your comments. So that made me think. Also, when Marcus brought up um, a mental, mental institution, institution or a drug rehab, we had previously, previously discussed as a board deed restricting those items. Like those aren't allowed for a new owner. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, I guess I should be saying this way. Does that make sense? Um, I just talked to Kathy, our superintendent, who has better connections than I, as she should, to our legal questions. We, we will, I, we cannot guarantee a deed restriction against Dollar General, but we have the opportunity when the bids come in for the auction to weave through and pick and choose, not because of favorites, but because of use case. Only thought about that for the two that Marcus had mentioned. I'll pay you later for using your name so much, but those are the only two I thought of. But the Dollar General conversation, I don't want that. I'm not looking at it merely as money. I know it doesn't change the conversation in totality, but I would say that she said, we'll look at it first thing in the morning. Doesn't matter because you're going to vote, but I just want you to know we'll be looking to limit the ability of the use case on that. I didn't bring it up before because I thought Dollar General and stores like it were put to rest. So sorry for the interruption. That's what I was chasing down. Thank you. Okay. Um, and just Monique, to your point, you know, you put, you put together a dollar amount for the rehab of that building. And I just want you to know that I think some people are willing to invest it to keep the building there. Um, that's just what I've heard from folks in Hinkley. So you know, a lot of people went to school there and they want to see it put to use in a, in a way that Hinkley Township could benefit from. All right. Do you have anything else? Do you want to have the public speak at all or you feel that you've heard from the public? I feel like we've heard. Okay. Does, does anyone else have? And I, I think they've heard. <laughs> I'll, I'll just add that I'm not making a decision compartmentalizing any part of the comprehensive plan. I'm going to make my decision based on the entire plan. So, Very good. And I'm going to make my decision based on the plan and the people that I spoke with. So at this time, I would like to make a motion to adopt the amendment request to the district map, an application for a zoning map change requested by Highland Board of Education, Chris Wolney, 3880 Ridge Road, Medina, Ohio, 44256, to rezone permanent parcel number 01603, D as in David, 01006, otherwise known as 1586 Center Road, Hinkley, Ohio, 44233, in the area of Route 303 Center Road and Route 3 Ridge Road of Hinkley Township from R1 Residential District to B2 Hinkley Town Center District. Can I have a roll call, please? You need a second? Second. Asheville? Yes. So you are adopting it? Oh. You're approving? Oh. A yes vote I'm sorry. Means I'm not, you are sorry. approving I'm the sorry. change. A no vote means you are voting not to approve the zoning amendment. Sorry, I thought we were doing a roll call on. Okay, no, I vote no. Swidek? No. Augustine? Yes. All right. At this time, I'd like to adjourn the special meeting at 9.01 p.m. Second. Seconded by Swedek. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you for clarifying that, Martha.
Recording stopped.